Hello, my name is Mr Skip. I'm the Deputy Head Teacher here at Sir William Romney's. Um, and I'll take a few moments just to talk you through um, our model for tracking pupil progress in years seven and eight. I think it's important really for me to start by kind of outlining our ethos and the kind of fundamental principles that underpin our approach to tracking progress with our year seven and eight students. So the three things really I wanted to just highlight. The first one is that here at SWR, uh, we recognise that students will start secondary school at varying levels of ability in different subjects and that each and every student will make progress at different rates in different subjects. Secondly, uh, we absolutely uh, recognise the importance of GCSEs and place huge value in them. They are the qualifications that will open doors and opportunities for students beyond uh, secondary school, whether that be uh, into college or sixth forms or just into careers. But education should be about far more than an exam grade. And thirdly, we believe that sometimes uh, reporting an exam grade can be quite misleading. It can mask uh, overperformance or underperformance. It doesn't tell us how much that student has improved or whether this grade is reflective of their true potential. So as an example, you could have a student receiving uh, achieving a grade six in English and another student um, achieving a grade four. And on the surface, that looks like the student who achieved the grade six um, was more successful. But that student achieving a grade six may have been targeted a grade eight, the potential to achieve much better than they had done. Whereas that student achieving a grade four may have um, actually been working way above uh, the standards they'd been working at previously. They'd made great progress there. And those grades alone would not acknowledge that. And so when we were coming up with an assessment model for our year seven and eight students, we want an assessment model that was a measure of progress that was linked to, but not limited by what is needed at GCSE to allow subjects to teach students more than just what they might need uh, to get a few marks in a, in a qualification. We also wanted a model that built on prior knowledge from the start, that took a student's starting position and ensured they continue to make progress from that point, rather than uh, some students racing to catch up with their peers and other students being allowed to kind of rest on their laurels uh, as they'd made more progress at an earlier stage. We also wanted to ensure there's a simple reporting system that lets students and parents know how they are doing in relation to their own starting point, uh, rather than in relation to a, um, a kind of numerical um, a numerical grade. And a model that was tied to clear success criteria in every subject, so each student always knows uh, how to improve and what the next steps in their education and their learning should be. And fundamentally, um, the model that we use, we believe, places a firm focus on learning um, and making progress. We believe that the grade the students eventually get at the end of Key Stage 4 is an outcome. But it's an outcome that will be determined by the progress that those students make over those five years. And so it's the progress that is crucial and important that we keep monitoring and keep encouraging and uh, pushing for with those students. And so the model that we adopt in this school, we refer to as our progress pathways. So how do they work? Well, over this year, um, teachers have been carefully assessing their students to get a really clear idea of the individual skills, needs and current position of each student in their class. They use a range of evidence to determine this. The prior attainment of students, that might be key stage two data, CATS test data, uh, performance in formal assessments within that subject, but also performance in class in general, which allows them to come to a holistic judgment of the minimum expectations of progress that they should be expecting from that student. And following that, they will then choose to place the students on one of five pathways. Our secure pathway, our confident pathway, which is students working slightly above those secure students, our novice pathway for students that aren't quite working at that secure level, so may need a bit more support or make a bit more progress in some of those areas. And then at either end, we have two pathways that are used in very rare instances. For example, our excelling pathway, maybe for one or two students who 
have a particular um, aptitude in a subject that they're truly kind of gifted in a particular subject area and need really pushing to that next stage. Um, and our emerging uh, pathway, which is for students that maybe are really struggling in a particular subject that may need some additional support or intervention. Crucially, these pathways allow us to tailor our expectations to each student. Each student will know what our minimum expectations are for them um, and they will be judged against those expectations rather, against, rather than against their uh, performance in comparison to their peers. This ensures that the level of challenge is always appropriate to each individual student and every student, regardless of their ability, is being encouraged to make progress. As I alluded to earlier, this um, model it will have clear links to their GCSE, but also crucially beyond GCSEs and thinking about how they're going to, uh, they're thinking about how their subject is going to contribute to them uh, after school and out in, in the wider sense of an education. And for our year seven students in particular, it's really important that we stress to them uh, and our teachers will be doing so, uh, that this is the start of a longer journey, that those GCSEs are five years away um, or four years away at the end of year seven. And so they have a great amount of time to make progress towards that end point. Um, crucially, students being placed on particular pathways does not limit their potential moving forward. It sets a minimum expectation for those students to ensure they don't slip backwards, but they continue to make progress. And every student is encouraged to push towards the pathway above um, to really make as much progress as possible. So how do you as a parent know if they are on track in each subject? Well, at the end of year seven, you will receive a report that lets you know uh, what pathway your child has been placed on in each subject. That will be coupled with an to learning grade and a homework grade, so you'll get a clear sense of how well they're engaging with their learning and whether they're engaging with learning outside of the classroom also. Moving into next year, you'll be receiving progress reports. On these progress reports for each subject, you will get a statement telling you whether your child is working, is meeting the expectations um, of that pathway that they've been placed on that subject. They're working above those expectations. They're working toward those expectations, so they're almost meeting all of them, but there may be one or two things that they need to continue to work on. Or they're working below those expectations. And so the report that you get will look something similar to this. And you'll see that with this student uh, in art and design, they are meeting their expectations and doing very well. Uh, in drama, they're absolutely kind of um, they're absolutely exceeding expectations. They're working above those expectations. But when we look at English reading and English writing, um, there are areas where they're not quite at the expectation that we feel that they could be at. Uh, they're working towards those expectations in reading In writing. They're working below those expectations. Now, in that situation where a student is deemed to be working below expectations, the teacher will have a learning conversation with that student to ensure that student's really clear on where those areas of weakness are and what they need to be developing. And also, um, if appropriate, they might uh, also include the parent in that conversation or contact the parent to talk to them about how they may be able to support in that situation too. So the aim is to ensure that um, at each reporting stage, parents, students um, are both fully informed as to how well their, the child is doing in relation to the expectations that are specific to them and tailored to them. Now I hope that uh, outline kind of gives you um, a, a bit of an explanation of how that, pro that process works in our school and the approach that we take and why we take it. Um, if you do have any further questions following the reports that are being issued at the end of this term, um, please do not hesitate to contact either your child's class teacher or the head of year who will be more than happy to kind of uh, give you a bit more information around around the pathway that they're on uh, and how they can uh, crucially how they can improve further. Thank you very much for listening. I hope that was useful. I hope to see you all in school soon.